I'm gonna be revealing the secret steps to editing the perfect waterfall photography. Here's the waterfall that we're gonna be editing today. It is from Great Smoky Mountains National Park, just a beautiful park and a perfect place for waterfalls. Let's jump in here. Now, you can see that I'm using Luminar Neo to edit some of these, but you can also edit the same photos using a different software. Maybe you're watching this and you say, you know what, that looks pretty cool. I wanna check out Luminar Neo. I'm not sponsored by Luminar Neo to make this video but I do have an affiliate link for Luminar Neo if you want to check it out with a special deal that does get our channel a little bit of a kickback for having an affiliate link. So that's linked below in the video description for you. So first off, I'm just going to enhance this a little bit. Let me describe what this is actually doing. With Accent AI Enhance, what's happening is it's actually increasing your highlights, decreasing your shadows, and increasing your contrast all at the same time using AI technology. I think that's a really good way to do it a quick edit to make too. Now, noiseless and super sharp is basically just denoising the image and sharpening the image. So if you have like Lightroom, you can do the same thing here. I'm just gonna use low denoise on this to make and decrease any noise that's occurring in this because I was photographing at ISO 800, which can introduce some noise to your photo. You can see that in the shadows, all that noise has pretty much disappeared here from the image. Now, I also want to sharpen this. Again, sar sharpen and super sharp are pretty much the same thing here. So I'm gonna to go to super sharp AI. I'm gonna to go to low because it's pretty sharp all the way through. I was using F16 to photograph this. So it's going to be pretty sharp already, but just to be safe, I'm gonna be using super sharp low to have this in the photo. And automatically it's done a good job to sharpen this image. Now let's head over to the basic adjustments here to develop this photo. For the exposure, I think it's pretty spot on. One of the things that I actually don't like about Luminar is you don't have the histogram up in the top of your screen to see what's happening and what it's doing. But for this, exposure looks pretty spot on. I'm also going to play around with the contrast a little bit. Now, the thing with waterfall photography and contrast is you want your viewer to see the actual waterfall and the water movement enough. So increasing the contrast will also increase those highlights and decrease the shadows because what contrast is doing is it's separating out those tones more so you're actually making the movement of the water brighter. If I drop that contrast down, which which is pretty much sacrilege in a lot of photographer circles, if I drop that down, you can actually see more action in the waters. But if I increase the highlights just slightly after that with a matching 18 numerical value on there, you can see that it actually brightens up that waterfall, but you're still keeping a lot of the details in there too. That's a little bit of a hack for you if you're not doing that. So I'm also going to drop the shadows just a little bit and see what that does. Now, the next step is just going to Clarity or Structure AI, as Luminar Neo calls it, but it's the same edit here. So Structure AI is basically just adding that little bit of clarity. Obviously, if you go all the way up, you go too much, so you just drop that down to where you want it to be, and that kind of makes up for any of the contrast that you're losing, decreasing the contrast slider. Let's go to color next, and for color, I skip saturation and vibrance altogether pretty much in my waterfall photography because I want to pinpoint specific colors and not just increase everything in the entire photo. So instead of doing saturation and vibrance, I'm actually going to go down to HSL or your hue saturation saturation and luminance. Now I know that in Lightroom you use the color dropper to pick out what colors you actually want to edit and if you want to see how to do that you can click or tap this card showing up on your screen right here. So for hue saturation and luminance I'm just going to go to saturation first because all my color hues are where I want them to be because of the image file and I'm just going to play around with these. So we did have some orange kind of nestled around in and around the waterfall. The yellows are gonna be impacting where the moss is, and obviously the greens are up where the tree is. Now, blues is really interesting because when you add a lot of structure, clarity, uh, separation between your highlight tones and water, it creates this blue tone in the water that actually wasn't really there. I'm gonna drop that blue saturation to remove that from my photo. So I'm gonna drop the blues. 
and I'm also going to drop the cyans a little to get that water white as I saw it in the field. So that looks pretty good there. I'm also going to go to my luminance to actually uh, mirror what I did with my saturations with my luminance sliders as well so I can see what that's affecting. I'm going to drop orange here. You can see where that orange is showing up if I go back and forth. I'm going to drop it a little bit. I'm going to increase my yellows and my greens to brighten those up some. And I can increase or decrease my blues. You see that occurring around the waterfall itself. I'll increase it just slightly there. So one of the things that I like about Luminar is that I can add some effects that I would normally have to go into Photoshop for if I was using Lightroom. So in Luminar, you can basically do it all together and it does a really good job and makes it simpler for you to edit. I'll show you how to do that. So for atmosphere, there was a little bit of haze and mist occurring in this waterfall. So for atmosphere, I'm just gonna play that up a little bit and I'm gonna go to mist and I'm gonna increase that mist amount. The depth, you can pick how high that was occurring in there and the lightness too. Now, since I don't want this all in one section of the photo, it was pretty much primarily in the back forest area of this photo. I'm gonna to go to masking, brush, and I'm just going to brush that into the back of the forest exactly where that's going. Now, this would be difficult to do in something like Photoshop, but in Luminar, you can easily just add this in. Now, I'm gonna go back to adjustments and just drop that a little bit there for a realistic effect. Now, because mist kind of makes it a little bit hazy and off focus slightly and add depth to the photo, I'm gonna play that up with some softening and some glowing in this too. So I'm gonna to go to glow and I'm going to add a Orton effect soft here. And I'm just gonna increase the amount of that. You'll see how that makes it glow, but it also reduces focus to that. And it does pretty much what fog would do. And I'm gonna to go to masking, brush. I'm just gonna brush it in to the same place that I did. Uh, with the haze there and I'm going to go back to adjust and drop that down just a little bit. So just adding a little bit of that to the atmosphere and then also a mystical effect is going to drop the actual color tones of that and I'm going to do the exact same thing with my masking that I did with the other two. So there we go. Now I have depth to this photo, not only in the waterfall, but what that mist was doing and that haze in the actual water itself. Now, lastly here, I'm actually going to do some dodging and burning. Now, if you don't know what dodging and burning is, it's a way to darken parts of the photo and also brighten other parts of the photo to make more attention to your actual subject, which is what you want to do in your composition anyways. Ansel Adams has used these techniques in the dark room and other photographers use these techniques all the time. And this is one way to really level up your photography and draw attention exactly where you want the viewer to look. So basically with dodge and burn, I start out with darken and I look for anything that's drawing attention away from the subject. Now the subject should be the brightest part of your photo to, so to find anything that is drawing attention away from your subject, you want to darken those. So that would basically be like this rock on the side here, maybe these up here and on the corners of this foliage, and then down, you're basically making kind of like your own little vignette here, maybe even down in this pool of water, gonna darken that some, and up in this corner, I'm gonna darken that up just a little bit too, maybe even this rock down in the very bottom corner. So we've darkened parts of this photo. I might even reduce the size of my brush here and just come in and darken that little section and that rock too. So we have the amount slider here. If I drop that down, we can play around with how dark I want those sections to be. And you can see how much attention it draws away from those sections. I'm gonna drop it down to about 50 here. I think that's a good point. And then I'll just kind of paint in other areas so it's not so obvious where that's occurring. Now in Luminar, what you can do is actually close out this tool and I can add in brightness however much I want apart from the darkness. So I'm gonna close that tool, gonna to go back into it and you see that everything is reset. I'm gonna to go to lighten and I'm going to just go through and barely lighten a lot of these moss sections that are right along the edge of this waterfall. I might even come in and brighten those up just a little bit little these parts of the rock 
and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna drop those just to where they're kind of glowing and bright in where they are. And then I also see some of these rocks are still a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna go right back into Dodge and Burn, darken, and I might darken these two big rocks right here and drop that amount. So those are the steps to editing perfect waterfall. Let's look at the before and after to see what this actually looks like. If I click on the before, that's what we started with. And for the after, this is what we ended with. You can see the difference in those two photos, really enhancing a lot of the features in this while also bringing out the final steps of using that dodging and burning. If you want more Luminar tutorials, you can click or tap this card showing up on your screen right now.